on how bond markets are trading. Simon Michelle joining us now, live now from Big Securities. Simon, great to see you there. Thanks very much for joining us. Now, we've been watching a lot of the volatility in the oil price at the moment. Higher oil prices, once again, that we're observing. That is raising those inflation expectations and subsequently pushing yields higher. Absolutely, and good afternoon. And that's certainly what we're seeing in the longer end of the curve. Yields have continued their move upwards as we approach that Fed move on the 15th. Um, interestingly, 30-year uh, US Treasuries are now at 3.1%. That is 1% higher than the low they reached back in July, August. So fairly significant movement on that long 30-year curve. And, um, of course, we are being, well, have been watching a lot of this data that's coming through in the United States. Um, that all-important jobs figure, the non-farm payrolls figure, is being released tonight. What are we expecting? And if that, this sort of widely varies, do you think we will get quite a savage market reaction? Look, I think we've seen some fairly solid uh, data coming through, both in, um, in the uh, labour market, um, also in spending mm -hmm. um, and in manufacturing. So I think it would take a fairly disappointing result to, uh, I, I suppose, make people think that uh, the Fed might hold back. Uh, I think there's been a flurry of fairly good results. And I think more importantly, really, is that inflation assumption. You know, the, the base rate of inflation now around the 2% in the US. That was really the, uh, the key uh, issue that uh, has eluded them for quite a while. So I think, uh, you know, unless it's something way out of uh, expectation, I don't think it's going to have a bit, uh, much of a difference, Leanne. So if we do continue to see those oil prices moving higher, um, I mean, of course, a lot of those big moves coming after the OPEC meeting this week, do you expect inflation expectations to, to continue on the rise? Well, I think they certainly could in the US. I mean, this is all really uh, based on two things. I mean, you've got the first, uh, this, you know, Trump surge, which is really about, uh, you know, infrastructure investment mm -hmm. uh, borrowing. And then you've also got uh, what's happened in relation to the oil price pushing up as well. So you've got a growth factor there on, uh, you know, the, the Trump policies and inflation. I think, uh, you know, it's, it's a wait and see. I, I'm, I'm not really uh, in bed with uh, the, the uh, policy expectations and whether they'll play out. I think that, that growth expectation might have been overdone. You could see some pullback on the long end of the curve there. Uh, Inflation-wise, I mean, absolutely, you know, if this oil price continues and we get that uh, further with commodities, you're certainly going to see that improve, uh, increasing over time as well, Leanne. Simon, I think you sort of alluded to it earlier. I don't think there's any question about whether the Fed will move in December, I think there is, well, almost 100% chance that they will hike rates in December. I think the question now is what happens going forward into 2017 and whether March, say, for example, will be on the cards. What is the expectation? What is the bond market telling us at the moment for those expectations going forward? Absolutely, Anna. That's a really good question because remember when we got the tightening in December last year, we then had uh, the Fed create uh, four dot points through 2016, of which they had four further rate increases. Uh, of course, none of those have happened, and uh, here we are uh, in December expecting the first one for this for this calendar year. So it's going to be really interesting to see. Uh, you know, the yield curve certainly is moving upwards, and certainly uh, you know is starting to build in further increasing increases on uh, by the U.S. Fed. But it's really going to be interesting to see what the Fed's view is and, and how they want to position the market. You know, whether uh, they want to be firm, whether they're going to wait and get that election, uh, that, uh, you know, wait for the new president in January and wait to see some of those policy, policy initiatives come through. Uh, look, I think uh, we're all sort of waiting to see that from the Fed. Yeah, watch and wait, I suppose. Does that Absolutely. go for Aussie yields as well? We're seeing them higher? Look, we are, absolutely. I mean, interestingly, if you have a look at the Aussie two-year at the moment, and that was down about 1.45, that's now at 1.8%. So, you know, certainly the, uh, our yield, yield curve is not suggesting any uh, downward moves by our RBA. That's largely on the back of the fact that if US you move their yields up, that takes a lot of pressure off of our yields comparatively so, so the, the RBA would be very happy with that. But uh, fairly significant moves on our curve as well. So are they sustainable? That's the big question. Yeah, it certainly is. Now, domestic bond issuance... Tell us what you've been watching. Look, it's interesting. Um, there's not a lot happening out there at the moment. In fact, I just checked in with our traders. They said it's a bit quiet, maybe in the lead up to that Fed move. Okay. Uh, but we are seeing some good issuances by some of the uh, regional banks. We've had uh, Suncorp Metway uh, issue. We've had uh, Bendigo and Adelaide Bank out there as well. Um, so, you know, I think people topping up. They've seen this, these upward movements and they're just topping up a bit of issuance uh, before uh, they move any higher, perhaps. All right. Excellent. Simon, we'll wrap things up there, but it's been great talking to you as always. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Thank you, Leanne. Simon and Michelle joining us there from Fig Securities. Well, let's